welcome to the journey so in the last two episodes we discussed about uh, i started on the journey of five t's of being transferred state to a transformed state then transportation or being transported uh, which we are going to discuss today and in the next uh, two sessions we are going to talk about transmutation and uh, also we are also going to touch a little bit about uh, how we transgress as well on our way right and how we transcend as the ultimate status right so all to do with five t's and i added a sixth t here is about the transgression but transgression can be found in all of these t's because from being transferred we transgressed in the beginning Uh, went against the word of God, went against his uh, statutes of what he expected us to do, what he wanted us to do. And while we were transformed as well, we didn't like the change and we transgressed against that as well. And you can find many examples in the book of, uh, in the Old Testament, right? in, uh, in Exodus, when people grumbled, talked about the past and we always wanted to go back to our old state. And today, as we discuss and embark on this story about how we are being transported uh, into our journey, on our journey, uh, let's dive a little bit deep to understand uh, what the, what's the meaning of being transported. Now, the worldly sense of being transported or finding a transport for ourselves is going from A to B. From one point to the other point and for that we use a vehicle your car your Jeep we use a bus we use a train we sometimes use a plane a ship there are various methods of uh, transportation methods and what matters in whatever the transportation method that you use is the destination the beginning and the end the destination So in our Christian life also, there's a beginning and there's an end. What is this end? In the worldly sense, people talk about end as death. But for us as Christians, our end is the beginning of eternal life. So that is the true destination, the essence that our Lord Jesus wanted us to achieve after that we uh, transgressed from that of our old state and we fell and Lord Jesus transformed us or transferred us to that of the old, uh, the previous glory in spiritual sense. And after, when we embark on this journey towards the end, that is the glory of God, that at the judgment day, that we will stand before him and immaculate and blameless and we receive a crown of glory and enter into eternal life with him so that is the end result so during this point to point transfer the period we call it the journey and we did a lot of studies about this journey that the uh, difficulties the obstacles that we find during this journey uh, in uh, we took uh, examples from exodus 23 and uh, the previous uh, Uh, sessions of discussions and studies are available in YouTube so they can always go back. That's more for spiritual warfare. But today as we discuss about this point-to-point -point transporting or transferring ourselves from going from point to the other point of the destination which the Lord wants us to achieve. Let us uh, take a few examples from the Bible, from the scriptures to understand how does the Lord transport us in this journey how does the lord transport us in this journey i love the old testament and i love the genesis and uh, so let's go back to the basics again so i told you in the beginning of this uh, the series of five t's we are always going back to the beginning and uh, I, once again even on this transportation part and i would like to go back to genesis chapter 1 and in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth and the earth was without form and void and darkness was on the face of the deep and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters 
Now you can see a very mm, striking element here. What amazed me so much is the Spirit of God was hovering, in other words, going to and fro, hovering on the face of the earth. The Spirit of God was more like being, uh, it's, a, it's a vehicle, transporting nothing, but still for all, he was hovering over the, the face of the earth. And he wasn't doing anything, he was just hovering. But what happened after this? Then the God said, let there be light. So there was a word released, a command released. Then the Spirit of God activated and executed it. So what the Lord revealed to me while I was reading this is that it's the word which gives fuel or energy or the command and the purpose to the vehicle that which transports us. In other words, that you may have already realized it right now, the Spirit of the Lord, though the Holy Spirit, is the vehicle that takes us from point A to point B. There's no other vehicle. That the Spirit of the Lord was hovering, and the God the Father gave the command, let there be light. The Word, the Word of Lord Jesus, and that Word was activated or exercised or put into practice by the Spirit of the Lord. So the Holy Spirit did the work and the Holy Spirit as a vehicle had a purpose at that time to create light as the Father de demanded it or commanded it. In the same manner, my brothers and sisters, in our journey as we embarked on this journey after being transferred to our reinstated to our old state, and being transformed into the nature, stature, and height, and maturity of our Lord Jesus, as we have started the process, as we are on this journey, being transported on the vehicle of the Holy Spirit, while we are working on that towards the destination, we need to respect and regard and honor the Holy Spirit as we are riding on Him. That's a very important thing. Because in Exodus 23, if you read again, in Exodus 23, the Lord says, For my angel will go before you and bring you into the, the tribes that we discussed in the previous studies. So who is my angel? The angel is one, the Lord Jesus Christ himself. And also, we are also in the previous verses, we read that he will not, he will not, uh, pardon your transgressions. So, along with to say that it was also the Holy Spirit. Lord Jesus forgave, remember. He forgives, he has a compassionate heart. But Lord Jesus says, any blasphemy against the Holy Spirit is not pardonable. In other words, the angel of the Lord, and in the previous verse of uh, be aware of him and obey his voice. Do not provoke him, for he will not pardon your transgressions. Exodus 23:21. So, it's important for us to understand who takes us on his back, on eagle's wings. When David talked about eagle's wings, and when we read in the Bible, take us through on the eagle's wings and all that, it's the Holy Spirit that takes us on this journey from point A to point B. So to be very conscious of this truth, the fundamental, uh, the basic, the most important truth, that it's the Holy Spirit who does the work. Holy Spirit who takes us on this journey. And it's the Holy Spirit who goes before us and destroys any obstacles on our behalf and gives us pre-warning, admonition, and gives us understanding, wisdom, knowledge, might, counsel, the Spirit of the Lord, as the seven spirits that we discussed in our previous studies, the Holy Spirit. Because Lord Jesus, as in the physical sense, did the transfer or the transformation part already through his physical sacrifice. Then when he was resurrected, even before he went to the cross, he said, I am sending you a helper. So why is the importance of a helper here? A helper is somebody that who takes us through the journey. 
somebody who helps to take us on the journey. Otherwise, why do we need a helper? You can see, I mean, when we walk on the street, a blind person has a helper. And the blind person is being handheld by a helper. A person who is senile, who is old, who is uh, not capable of walking, and who is uh, frail, is being helped by a helper. When we are sick, we have a helper to take us from one end to the other, even from bed to the bathroom. We have a helper. Little children have helpers as parents. We help them, hold them by their hands and take them from one destination to the other destination, to the other point. So in the same manner, this is the same, which in a spiritual sense, what our Lord, Holy Spirit, Lord, Lord Jesus mentioned that the Holy Spirit is doing in our lives as well. Helping us in order to transport us or to take us in this journey from point A to point B. If we realize this and internalize this fundamental truth, my, my brothers and sisters, it will be very easy for us to uh, rely on him without having to worry about seeking help from any other gods, seeking help from any other material things, superstitious things. Because we know our helper is just beside us. When our Lord Jesus mentions that I am sending you a helper, he, is already, he has already sent. And he has, he has, what he has, he is no man to lie. He has already done it. Why don't we feel it? Why don't we rely on the helper? Remember, even in a computer, even in this phone, even in any material thing or any technical thing, there is a help guide. There's a manual to help you. If you find, uh, if you buy a new phone, if you buy a new computer, and if there's nobody to help you, to take you through, and a help menu comes up, right? To help you through, to start the journey and to end the journey. If materially we rely on help and helpers, manuals, why can't we spiritually rely on our Holy Spirit to help us to take us on this journey? It's a decision that we need to make. That's the decision that we make in order to ride on the Holy Spirit. And when we are on the Holy Spirit, when we are on the vehicle of the Holy Spirit being transported to our destination, believe me, my brothers and sisters, that's the most safest vehicle on earth that you can ever ride on. People boast about, as Bible says, people trust in horses as in the manner that we also trust in many vehicles. I mean, I am, I am an automobile uh, enthusiast. So I used to uh, say that the vehicle that I used to drive was the most safest. And people say Volvo, and BMW, Mercedes, uh, I'm not promoting the brands here, but they are supposed to be the most safest vehicles on earth. But they also crash, even my vehicle crashed. And the confidence that I had of the vehicle went off, but the confidence in my Lord increased that time. Because if it wasn't for the Lord, I would not have survived that. It's not the vehicle. But a couple of years ago that I used to extol, or I had to uh, commend the vehicle saying that's the most safest. No. They can let you, let you down. Any material thing on this earth that comes into the aid of you to help you can let you down. I've experienced it firsthand as well. You saw my testimony, you saw the pictures of my accident and all that. But the Holy Spirit, when we ride on Him, when He is our helper, when He is our vehicle, we are the most safest environment, safest vehicle being transported to our destination. And when we are on the safest vehicle, yes, as a vehicle travels through the journey, there will be... Uh, uh, floods, there will be tornadoes, there will be avalanches, there will be mudslides, there will be earthquakes, there could be barriers. Yes, that we face them. Because if we don't face them, what is the story that we have in the end of the day to say? We wouldn't have a story to talk about. Because any victory is the sweetest. When that victory is uh, imbued with experience of bitter pain and the trouble and the challenges that we faced during the pathway. 
Otherwise, it's not a victory. Otherwise, it's not an achievement. That's what the Lord Jesus says. I have given you victory, but on your path, you will face tribulation. But when you face tribulations and come to the destination where that I have prepared for you, and you will be glorious and you will rejoice, saying, Lord, is this the path that I traveled? Lord, this path I would not have traveled without you, not by my strength or by my might, but by the Spirit of the Lord. That's the Holy Spirit there once again, by the Spirit of the Lord, nothing else. So on our journey is not our strength, not our money, what we know, the degrees that we hold, the vehicles that we travel in, physical vehicles or the mansions that we live in, and it's not uh, uh, whatever that we use as material things, not our positions in the society. No. It is the Spirit of the Lord that takes us on this journey. So, what does the Spirit of the Lord need in order to take us through this journey? As a vehicle travels on to a destination from point A to point B, the vehicle needs fuel. So what is this fuel on our journey being transported of the Holy Spirit? As I went to Genesis chapter 1, the Holy Spirit was hovering over the earth. The word of the Lord charged the Holy Spirit to execute the purpose. So the fuel that it propels our journey through the Holy Spirit is the word of our God, word of our Lord Jesus. So the word only activates, the word only gives energy to, to propel and to take us through this journey. So we have identified what is our transportation method is or transportation means of our transportation is that's our holy spirit and the holy spirit gets activated the more word that we put in and internalize in our lives just like genesis chapter one the lord god said let there be light then the holy spirit started activating in the same manner in this journey the holy spirit as he takes us on to the destination it's the word of God that keeps us propelled or energized in order to walk on this journey. The word of God, as we face the challenges on our way, the word of God happens to drive those challenges away and make us overcome those challenges. Remember, in Exodus chapter 13, the Lord led the Israelites by a cloud during day and a pillow of fire in the night. So we all know what a pillow of fire is. That's the Holy Spirit. And a cloud during day, giving them shade and consolation. Who consoles us? It's the Holy Spirit. A person who consoles. That's why the Lord Jesus said, a helper. A helper always consoles us. And during, during daytime, the Israelites, when the sun was scorching, when the desert environment was so excruciatingly difficult, they have cloud. That is the helper. That's the Holy Spirit. So even in the Old Testament, in the physical manner, the Holy Spirit traveled with them day and night. And the word was with them. Because the word as spoken by our Lord, our Lord the Father through Moses was with them. And the Holy Spirit was there and made them conquer, overcome the challenges as they traveled towards their promised land. In the same manner, my brothers and sisters, we also do, the, we also go through the same, first the natural, then the spiritual. We go through the same spiritual journey as we have embarked on it. Whether you like it or we are already on the journey. There's no turning back. Try to turn back. Try to forget our Lord Jesus, even for a split second. Believe me, I tried it. At times when things were so excruciatingly difficult, I just said, Lord, I don't need you. Depart from me, Father. And depart from me, Lord. I don't need you. I've told it many times while traveling. 
uh, while being seated, while walking, while standing, I, I, I have done that. But the split second is always beside me. A split second in the next minute or the next second he is there with me. That is why David said, even if I go to the top of the mountain, to the deepest abyss, you cannot leave God out of the equation. People are trying their level best to leave God out of the equation. I mean, when you look at the things that are which are transpiring right now, what's happening in the world right now, there's a major war going on. And the whole world is focused on Israel and uh, Palestine, Gaza, Hamas, the Hezbollah and the fights and all that. So whoever is opposing Israel right now, what are they trying to do? The more they oppose, the more that they are trying to prove that God is real, that they are trying to oppose God. Whom are they trying to prove wrong here? The very existence of God, which they cannot put out of the equation. So, in the New Testament, and when the legions implored Lord Jesus, we implore you, don't cast us away. Even the demons need Lord Jesus to survive. So nobody can put our Lord Jesus, the Holy Spirit and the Father out of the equation. So why try all these futile attempts to do the work of the Antichrist, whereas that you have already convinced yourself, that you have already admitted, the people have already admitted there is Christ. Take for example, my brothers and sisters, we live, we count the years, now this is year 2023. 2023 years after what? Is it BC before Christ or AD? Is AD. So the whole world who doesn't even believe in Jesus, who doesn't, be, who all, even science, those who say, okay, there was no person called Jesus. And this is all a myth. And this is just a fairy tale. They still count the year and their birthday. They celebrate based on the death of our Lord Jesus, 2023 years ago. If it was before Christ, how old do you think that you are then in that case? If you were to calculate it in any other different ways of calculating. So the atheist, the Antichrist, Christ, and those who are in Christ and not in Christ, on Christ or under Christ or whoever it is, you all believe in after the death of Lord Jesus. So we cannot put Lord Jesus out of the equation. So I took a little bit of time uh, trying to explain something else, but still back onto our track of being transformed or transferred, we came to a very pivotal point to understanding that is the fuel that propels the vehicle of, uh, of that which takes us on this journey is the word of God. So in Isaiah 55, 11, God says, my word which is spoken shall not come to me void without fulfilling the purpose that it is meant for. A word spoken, it shall not come to me void. What is this word that the Lord is talking about? The statutes, the commands as the truth that he has declared out of his very, very mouth. So let us take this one example. One of the promises that he has given. In Jeremiah 30, 70, Lord says, I have restored your health and healed you of all your infirmities. When the Lord says, I have restored your health and healed you, that means you and me, out of his own very mouth that he has declared it, can that word come back void on the Lord, according to Isaiah 55, 11? Ideally, it cannot. Right? Then why a Christian claiming that word, printing it on the wall, remembering and reminiscing it from morning to evening, you can even uh, inscribe it on your forehead. 
why is it the Christian does not get healed of any sickness? Who claims that word? Why? Right? So Isaiah 55 and 11 says, my word does not come back to me void. That's a declaration. That's the truth. And it is solid. So my word, which the spoken word of the Lord, Jeremiah 30, 17 says, I have healed you. I have restored your health. Then why does a Christian fall sick? One who believes in the Lord, one who has accepted the Lord, been baptized into the water baptism of the Lord, and who speaks in other tongues, doesn't get healed. So we, to understand that better, let's go to Luke chapter 8, uh, the parable of the sower. I'm going to take you there uh, to link this logic or the argument from the parable. So in the parable of the sower from, now you know what the parable is, if you read from verse 5, a sower went out to sow his seed, and as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and it was trampled down, and birds of the air devoured it, and so on. And in verse 11, the parable of the sower is explained by Lord Jesus in his own words. So let's read that. Luke chapter 8, verses 11 to 15. Now the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. Those by the wayside are the ones who hear. Then the devil comes and take away the word out of their hearts, lest they should believe and be saved. But the ones on the rock are those who, when they hear, receive the word with joy, and these have no root, who believe for a while and in time of temptation fall away. Now the ones that fell among the thorns are those who, when they have heard, go out and are choked with cares, riches, and pleasures of life, and bring no fruit to maturity. But the ones that fell on the good ground are those who have heard the word with a noble and good heart, keep it, and bear fruit with patience. The seed is the word of God. Those by the wayside are the ones who hear that the devil comes and takes away the word out of their hearts. So likewise that we have the second category, the one, those who hear the word by the wayside. And we have a second category, one who hear the word on the rock. Are those who, when they hear the word, receive the word with joy and which does not have any root, who believe for a little while and temptation takes it away. And also, those who, uh, the area in which, in the thorns where the seed fell, they also hear the word. Those who have heard the word go out and are choked with cares of the word. And there is a fourth category. But those who that fell on the good ground are those who, having heard the word with a noble and a good heart. So in this parable, we are talking about Four types of people, those who are on the wayside, those who are on the rock, those who are in the thorns, and those who have good grounds. In other words, these four types of people are four types of attitudes and hearts of us. Those who, but all these four people, four types of people, there's one common thing, that all of them hear the word. All of them heard the word. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So there's a little bit of a mystery here that I was struggling to understand. I was asking the Lord, if all these four types of people with four different attitudes heard the word, and the Lord says in Romans 10, 17, that faith comes by hearing of the word, so why didn't they fructify from the word? Why didn't they succeed from the word? Why did the word uh, not grow in their lives? If faith was also instigated, 
if then which means all of them heard the word and faith comes by hearing as they heard the word then all four categories of these people would have had the immense faith at least a little bit of faith and lord jesus says once again a master seed of faith is enough for you to command the mountain so what happened here why is it only on the p on the person whose heart was like fertile ground only fructified or only bore fruits and the other three types did not bear any fruits there has to be another missing element in this uh in this mystery why the word did not work in other words as the holy spirit is taking us on this journey if the word is the fuel that propels this journey sometimes we may not progress in this journey we may be in the same place it will take long time for us to go from a to b why the word does not work in certain people because of this missing link the word is there you hear the word from morning to evening and by hearing it your faith is also developed but the vehicle is not moving we are not transported the holy spirit is not doing the work why all these four people four types of people heard the word right and it's only the fourth type that fructified or bore fruits the other three types did not bear any fruits the word was heard but the word was choked word sprang up a little bit of a root but it also died in the pathway and the devil would come and snatch it away so it did not profit them at all so why the fourth category what was so special about them what really is the fertile soil in other words the fertile heart of a of a human being the answer to that we can find in hebrew chapter 4 let's read hebrew chapter 4 from the beginning therefore since a promise remains of entering his rest let us fear lest any of you seem to have come short of it for indeed the gospel was preached to us as well as to them but the word which they heard did not profit them not being mixed with faith in those who heard it for we who have believed do enter that rest as he has said so i swore in my wrath they shall not enter my rest although the works were finished from the foundation of the world therefore since the promise remains of entering his rest remember my brothers and sisters rest is the destination that the lord wants us to achieve we are being transported towards the destination of ultimate rest let us fear lest any of us seem to have come short of it for indeed the gospel was preached to us as well as to them that means to both the jews and the gentiles but the word which they heard did not profit them not be mixed with faith in those who heard it so there you go it explains the reason why the parable of the sower the three categories of people whose word was choked whose word fell short of sprouting life and whose word was stolen by the devil why it did not profit them is the reason they did not mix that word of the hearing of the word with faith so if they heard it hearing alone is one thing but mixing that with faith is important for the vehicle to move forward let me take this example again as you go to pump fuel to your car does fuel itself drive or ignite the car take you to the destination no fuel is important but the liquid form of the fuel need to be converted into energy by 
a particular mechanism in the vehicle and we call it the ignition or the spark plug. The ignition, the spark of our life in the spiritual sense is the faith that which gives us a hope, which gives us the ability to believe in something tangible. Faith is a substance of things not seen. So it's the spark that which gives us that hope, that element, the substance that we believe in. Lord, you have a destination prepared for us. Lord, that I believe that you are going to come from heaven and to establish this kingdom for us, that you are going to accept us into your kingdom. So that faith, that substance, ignites the fuel and gives energy for the vehicle to move forward. And you can read from the rest of the verses as well. For we who have believed, in other words, mixed our understanding with faith, the word with faith, do enter that rest as he has said. So only the people, those who hear, mix it with faith, will only get to the ultimate destination of rest. So this is the rest that we are going to uh, from point A to point B. Ultimate rest. So my brothers and sisters, so in this episode, uh, we discussed about the transportation part, that is the mode of transportation is our Lord Jesus through the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit who does the work, activated by the Word, and the Word as we heard it in our lives is only propelled and ignited by the level and the degree of our faith. It's the faith which turns the speedometer. Is the RPM in our lives, rotation per minute in our lives. I'm taking a little bit of a jargon here, but you may have seen a vehicle, how fast it goes as we pedal to the metal. So higher degree of faith, higher RPM revs in our lives will make our vehicle go faster towards the destination. If our RPM is low, low revs, we will go slow. So it all depends on the level of faith that we exercise in our lives. So let us take heart, my brothers and sisters, to build upon this faith day in and day out, believing in our Lord Jesus, believing at most confidence, having at most confidence in our Holy Spirit, that he is taking us securely to that destination and help him, in other words, with our faith. So intermingled with both of them, and we shall be able to securely land in our destination without any trouble. And that's a sure destination. And it's a beautiful destination. So let us strive towards it as Paul did so. So thank you uh, for tuning in today. So next week, we are going to discuss about another interesting topic called transmutation. I'm going to take some beautiful examples from the, li uh, from, from the Bible about transmutation. And... Uh, until we meet again, God bless you.